What is, according to you, the role of a consciousness in quantum mechanics? In which sense you say that the study of the universe and the study of consciousness will be insep inseparably linked and, the, and that ultimate uh, progress in uh, one will be impossible without progress in the other? Oh, this is closely related to what yeah. we just discussed. Uh, we uh, may sometimes misuse our language. We think uh, uh, we are talking about reality, but we are having in mind one thing. Quantum mechanics allows you to mean by that something else. And then maybe there is a possibility to make peace between all of this. But it is a little bit difficult. And what I actually mean, uh, well, uh, what I will say right now will sound like a solipsism. Okay, so let's just say nevertheless. Your knowledge starts with your feeling of pain, happiness, blue, yellow, green. This is how you start, well, thinking about everything around you. And then you say, oh, okay, this uh, gray and solid, let me call it stone, okay? And then you start operating with them as if they were objectively existing things which exist independently of you. And then this model of the world is extremely successful. So this approach to everything is extremely successful. But being extremely successful does not guarantee that you cannot make any step further. And I will give you an example, uh, which I actually used in my book. And my editor suggested me to throw this part away from the book. He said that, actually it was she in Russia, she uh, said to me that uh, if you don't throw it out, then you lose the respect of your colleagues. And I answered that if I throw it out, I will lose my self-respect, which is more important for me. So um, uh, what I said is that think about uh, what Einstein did for uh, uh, the understanding of space. So before Einstein, space was just a set of numbers which characterize real objects moving there. Okay? So it's a set of numbers, this is a coordinate, the object is a real thing. Space is just mathematics, okay? So it's okay, but it's mathematics. It's not a real thing. Now then, he first said that it's not only space, but also space-time. But when she, he introduced general theory of relativity, he said that space-time may have degrees of freedom of its own. So you may imagine the universe, which does not have any protons, neutrons, quarks, leptons, photons, anything, it's just space and time, which nevertheless will be breathing, moving, changing. So this makes space-time alive. It makes it material in the same way as matter was before. So this geometry, instead of well, set of numbers, it becomes essential. It's, it has its own existence, independently of protons and neutrons. Then, so this is the first step, that these numbers became physical. Then supersymmetry, supergravity came, and they said that actually these protons, neutrons, and other stuff, you can easier, more elegantly describe them as perturbations, some changes of geometry of a more important object, which is a superspace. So they generalize the concept of Einstein of space, they introduced it superspace. And when they made these matter particles, they made it excitations of superspace. So what evolution was, space is irrelevant. Space is just mathematics. And in the end point, superspace is describing matter. Matter is just a way of describing what happens with geometry of superspace. So previously, we used consciousness with the idea that consciousness is just a description of objectively existing reality. Now, see this is like I'm in a church now and I'm, you must pray what I'm saying like a priest. I'm saying what is about reality. So previously we thought that consciousness is just a description like space-time. It was just a description of objectively existing reality. So what if 
consciousness is a part of it, is also as real as what we think is real. Like when you are saying about apple, you think that apple is an object. Why don't you consider your pain as a real object instead of just saying, oh, it's painful, but it's just me. But then maybe pain is by itself something really existing. You should not just re reduce it to description of the material world. And if so, then remember what happened with space-time when Einstein suggested that space-time can have a degree of freedom of its own, you start thinking about the possibility of existence of space-time without protons and neutrons. What if your consciousness can exist without protons and neutrons? We don't know it, but we still did not find degrees of freedom which are import important for general theory of relativity because they so weakly interact with our world. These are gravitational waves. Nobody has seen them. Almost a hundred years for this Einstein theory, but we know that if we remove these degrees of freedom from the theory, it becomes inconsistent. When we remove consciousness from the picture of our world, this picture becomes inconsistent. And now maybe at the final step, there will be something even greater than that, some kind of super consciousness. I do not want to go too far to the to things which I myself can only speculate about. Um, but maybe then we will understand that what we see right now is a realization of something bigger, whatever it is going to be. So when we are developing science the way we are developing, we should just keep our eyes open and not being, uh, how to say, uh, too conservative because of the uh, established framework of which we started taking so much for granted that we are afraid to move a little bit away. If we move too much away, then so many crackpots which are doing it and you cannot distinguish. We are receiving hundreds of messages of people who are trying to change the general theory of relativity and people just do not understand that this is not the way how it happens. So we should not go this way but we should not be overly conservative as well because we can just miss some parts of knowledge which may be fundamentally important and we do not want to miss it. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Lin. Not at all. Really, thank you very much.